Hello and welcome to the Mayfield Renewables course on the 2023 uh, NFPA 855 and fire codes requirements for energy storage systems. This is a course that we put together. Uh, we had a previous version and so we've updated it for the newer code versions and want to spend some time talking about the various requirements in fire codes and NFPA 855. We're going to spend most of our time in 855, but we will get into some of the other fire codes that apply and uh, things like UL 9540, 9540A. So, you know, this is really meant to help you as an engineer, as a designer, installer when you're working with energy storage systems and the fire code requirements that that go along with those. Just so you know, I mean, as we're looking at the progression of energy um, storage systems and our codes. So you see in 2006, we had, you know, that's when lithium got added kind of as we progress through the year, not some any real big changes until we get to 2018. We have some significant changes in IFC and NFP 855. And then we get ourselves up to 20, the 2021 version, which is the current version right now. Um, we'll be seeing a new version of those released uh, in the next year. And so you know, we'll see more changes and things like that. But here's where we see that NFPA 855 was released in 2020 and the basis of the codes. And so it really helped align what the standards are saying and calling out and what the codes are requiring. First off with International Fire Code, uh, Section 1207 is where you're going to find the requirements surrounding electrical energy storage systems. And the General requirements, we're not going to spend really much time in 1207 or in International Fire Code specifically because in a PA 855, that entire document really encompasses what's in these codes. And so it's it's a more, again, more complete document. It's uh, going to give you better, more thorough information, I would say. And there are some direct correlations. So if you're going through 1207 of, eight, of energy storage systems in uh, IFC, and you have 855 open on the other side of your desk, you'll see the language is exactly, I mean, they're, they mirror each other. They don't flow the exactly the same way, but they do have that same type of, the same language in them. Your listed ESS unit, so the storage inside of one container, is gonna be maxed out at 20 kilowatt hours per the standard. Now, the question then becomes, how much can I install? How many kilowatt hours can I install? And so we have our list of four locations again, and we're going to say, we're gonna have a limitation on the stored, total stored capacity or maximum allowable quantities in, within those locations. If you do exceed those and your jurisdiction, or maybe you exceed maybe even these values or you want to exceed these values, code is, does not say you absolutely cannot do it. All code or the standard says is you now have to meet chapters four through nine. So the requirements are going to put you into those of equal to a commercial industrial application. And so that's gonna be how you're gonna be able to uh, meet those requirements if you wanna exceed these quantities. Looking at it in terms of, you know, kind of an illustration view, same kind of thing as we looked at before in terms of the spacing, but now we're just kind of showing, hey, you can have 80 kilowatt hours in the garage, 40 inside that utility room, uh, eight, another 80 wall mounted outside. You could put another 80 on a ground mount system outside. So there's a lot of storage ca uh, capabilities for your residential applications. 